Hello, do you know what the difference between tonicity and osmolality is? And why is this important for hyponatremia? That's the question. So we are dealing with hyponatremia and we're dealing with tonicity, tonicity and osmolality. These are two things that it's very good to know if you want to uh, look, uh, find the cause of the hyponatremia. So if we have a membrane, this is a cell membrane, you, you are composed of cells. So you are composed of small cells. The whole, your whole body is composed of cells. And the cells have a cell membrane. And this is the membrane, let's say. And if this is inside the cell and this is outside the cell, then you call this extracellular extracellular and this is inside the cell I will just write cellular and then you have a lot of uh, solutes so a lot of uh, ions nature uh, sodium glucose and all, all, all stuff all kind of stuff here in the extracellular space and the same goes for in the intracellular space okay and if if we have for example more of more solutes here outside extracellular then the water will tend to move toward the side which have a lot of solutes so the water will move in this direction i will write here water so this sides have more solutes so more stuff here then the water tends to move here and you call this hyperosmolality so or the, os, the osmolality here outside is more larger now than in the cell because you have more of these but what's the difference then because tonicity is the same thing the tonicity here is larger than the than it's in, inside here so what's the difference then the difference is let's say that this is a sodium this is a sodium this is a sodium let's say this is a glucose and this is a glucose and this one too okay i will write it here sodium and glucose these are two things that are effective they call it they have a, they they cannot move to the other side of the membrane they are not they, they cannot penetrate this membrane if you look at other things like urea or alcohol these are for example two things let's say this is a urea and this can now move through the membrane it's permeable alcohol too let's say the alcohol is here this can move to the other side. This means that tonicity is something that are related to these things, sodium and glucose, which means those solutes which cannot cross the membrane. And what will happen now? If sodium and glucose are in this side and you have a lot of them let's say you have a lot of sugar in your blood a lot of glucose then the tonicity will increase because the tonicity will then move water here if we have a lot of urea this one this one this guy here and we have a lot of urea here then this will not attract water it will not attract water instead it will move to the other side because you see there are fewer things here and therefore this will move to this direction you always have to remember that the movement is from a high con is, is from a uh, low so let's say movement of water is always from a low concentration of solids to a high one because we want to comp we want to have an equilibrium it's too concentrated at this side 
we want to have the same concentration here as we have here. So the way the body does this is that it moves water to the side where we have a lot of solute. So it's built, it will, the concentration in both sides will be the same. The solutes will not be the same, so there are more, more stuff here, but since the water moves here, then we have less, less, of so, less of the solutes, but we also have less of water, and therefore the concentration is the same on both sides. And now, the, the importance of tonicity is that the solutes on this side cannot move to the other side and therefore the water will tend to move here and when you have a high tonicity then you call it hyper hypertonic hyponatremia and why let's look at glucose for example we have a lot of glucose here. Let's say we have a lot of glucose here on this side. What will this make? What, what, what will this do? So you eat a lot of sugar and you get a lot of glucose in extracellular. And what is extracellular? That's for example in your blood vessels. B blood is not flowing in your cells. Blood is flowing outside of your cells. So if you have if you have two cells here. Then you have, let's say, an artery here, okay? So the extracellular is this one, artery, and this intracellular is the two sides of the artery. You get the point? So when I say extracellular, I'm, for example, referring to the arteries. So you have a lot of glucose, sugar in your blood. That means extracellular, that means in this side. That this glucose cannot move, this, move across this membrane. It's, it's not permeable. Therefore, the tonicity will be high, a very, very high concentration of glucose here, tonicity will be high. The water will now move from, from the cell inside to the vascular system, so here, inside to the extracellular space, to compensate this high concentration. And what will happen now with the sodium concentration? We said that this is sodium, this is sodium, this is sodium, for example. When you have a lot of water moving in here, the concentration of the sodium will decrease. So we had a high glucose here, we have a high glucose. And then when the motor, water moves here, then the sodium will get decreased. The, the, the sodium didn't change. The number, let's say we have one, two, three sodium molecules. The three sodium molecules didn't change, but the change what happened is that water moved here and therefore the concentration when you measure for example if you have a but uh, if you have a glass of water here is a glass of water if you have three sodium uh, molecules here then it's still three even if i increase the water so much then you have for, i will draw another glass of water so you get the point so which which one have a which one have a higher concentration of sodium one you see this glass has more water it has three sodium molecules this glass has less water have three sodium molecules it's still three sodium molecules but the concentration here is higher because concentration just means that how many molecules do you have per volume of water and if you have more volume of water then these three molecules are so less uh, are, 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 are less than so in order for you to understand this even better if you don't get it let's draw it like this uh, and we'll draw water like this, and this what this is full. So this is two double double amount of water in this glass as compared to this one. We have still three sodiums. So the volume increased by double, and the concentration decreased by half. Then, because in in for example, this is one liter. This is one uh, one deciliter. 
and this is two deciliter. So in two deciliter water, you only have three molecules. Here in one deciliter molecule, you have three molecules. So if you would have, uh, if you would have uh, uh, this concentration in that one, if you want to have the same concentration in the same volume, then you need to have, uh, then you need to have six molecules here. So if you want a full glass with two deciliter and you want the same concentration as here, you need then to add three more molecules. Okay, then you get the same concentration in these two. And that's, that's the whole concept. So when you have a lot of glucose, sugar, that can cause something called hypertonic hyponatremia. That means that this hyper means a lot of tonicity, not osmolality, tonicity. Because glucose is a molecule that cannot move through the membrane. So the definition of tonicity is that you have high amount of molecules that cannot penetrate the membrane. Then you have high tonicity. And hypertonic hyponatremia is that we, uh, it's because we caused a hyponatremia by a high tonicity that moved water into this space and therefore the sodium concentration decreased as we had in our glass example. So in our uh, glass we had uh, this amount of water and we had three sodium and then water moved in and we got more water but we still had three so the concentration decreased and therefore you have hyponatremia. That's it. I hope you understood this. So when you, when you have a question about the tonicity or osmolality, I always want you to remember that the difference is that molecules that can penetrate the membrane, those are affecting the osmolality, like urea, because urea just moves to the other side. Those, who are, those molecules who are affecting the tonicity are, for example, sodium and glucose. Those cannot move through the membrane and therefore they attract water. So they take water from the cells into the extracellular space, so into your vascular system. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening.